In this video, I'm going to talk about the ACE2 receptor, which is how the coronavirus enters human cells, or at least that's how it is described as there are a handful of videos I watched online or, and some articles that have discussed this, and there is some confusion with, with this language. So I'm going to show you imaging, not imaging, I'm going to show you images uh, as to how this works and the best way to look at this. So this paper, you can see it was published in 04, and they identified that you can see the ACE2 structure. The ACE2 structure uh, functions as a SARS cove so your coronavirus receptor. So ACE2 is actually, this is actually an enzyme. I'm gonna show you how it works before I show you how the entry of the coronavirus operates. So from this article, we were given this image. I'm gonna modify this, there we go. So looking at the lung cell, you can see two different sections here on the enzyme. This is the ACE2 enzyme, it is called angiotensin converting enzyme number two. This catalytic site is for angiotensin two. This spot right here that is highlighted, this is where the novel coronavirus binds to gain access to cells. So angiotensin two is produced by the liver normally and it is produced in excess by the liver and by body fat cells during obesity, which is why obese people tend to be hypertense. And so angiotensin II, it binds to its receptor on the enzyme. When this happens, angiotensin II is converted into angiotensin 1-7. Angiotensin 1-7 has the opposite effects of angiotensin II. So this means that the human body has a mechanism by which it naturally deflames excess angiotensin II. And until scientists identified that the coronavirus family could bind to the ACE2 enzyme in this area right here, it really was not thought of as being anything else other than the enzyme that deflames, at least that's my language, deflames the excess angiotensin II. Okay, so this is from that article, which you can download and look at it if you wish. And you can see here the term spike protein. So this is the viral membrane. This is SARS-CoV-2, the coronavirus from late 2019, early 2020 as it emerged. And you can see this is the binding area of the spike protein. And it binds too. you can see binding site on the enzyme right there. Nothing to do with the receptor or the binding site called the catalytic site for angiotensin II. So this is what happens. Once SARS-CoV-2 binds to the ACE2 receptor, the virus enters, in this case, the lung cell. Now, normally speaking, if you just have entry to this degree, in general, there will be mild symptoms. So why is it that obese diabetics have much more severe symptoms? Well, it has to do with the change that occurs with the enzyme. First, there is a reduction of the enzyme, which seems almost counterintuitive. You get reduced ACE2 enzyme, and it becomes sugar-coated, and that allows for greater entry of SARS-CoV-2. Of SARS so hyperglycemia can worsen the prognosis of COVID-19, and the reason why is because the sugar-coating of, it's called glycosylation, of the ACE2 enzyme allows for greater entry of the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus into lung cells. And this is why, or at least part of the reason why, obese diabetics have a far worse outcome when they manifest COVID-19 compared to lean, healthy people who suffer mildly. These individuals suffer severely. So, at this point in time, you should ask yourself, how often does Bill Gates and Fauci and the rest of that crew out there, how often do they even remotely talk about hyperglycemia and obesity and how devastating it is for COVID-19? They don't. They, they talk about don't shake hands, stay six feet apart, and wait for Bill Gates' vaccine to show up. They should be showing this image to get everybody who is obese and diabetic who are young and healthy or young and could be healthy 
to reverse their obese diabetic state. So now let's look at how this ACE2 enzyme works normally. So here you can see the ACE2 enzyme is involved in two conversion spots. ACE2 converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 1,9, and then we move down and get converted into this, the other, the first ACE enzyme. So you have, it's called ACE, not ACE1, but we, you could call it ACE1. So the angiocondensin converting enzyme converts 1,9 to 1,7. We also get the conversion of angiotensin 2 via the ACE2 enzyme into angiotensin 1,7. So the body has two ways of producing anti-inflammatory angiotensin 1,7 so it can combat the pro-inflammatory nature of angiotensin 2. When you are lean and healthy, there is a proper balance, so the potential inflammation and lung damaging effect of angiotensin 2 and the hypertensive effect is inhibited by the anti-inflammatory lung damage protecting effect of angiotensin 1,7. So before the coronavirus ever appeared on anyone's radar, this existed for pro-inflammatory individuals who are obese and diabetic. And you can see there is a greater amount of angiotensinogen being produced in obese diabetic individuals. Well, I'll show you that in a couple seconds. So renin is overproduced. And here's renin is unbolded. Here it is bolded. Renin causes this conversion. So notice more angiotensin 1 compared to deflamed people. And then angiotensin 1 in excess, there is less conversion to 1,9, less conversion to 1,7 because the ACE2 enzyme is inhibited by uh, the pro-inflammatory state created by obesity, diabetes, aging, and heart disease. So this leads to an imbalance between pro-inflammatory angiotensin 1 and anti-inflammatory angiotensin 1,7. So what is the outcome? We are in a lung damaging environment. Now this is the state that people live in when they are obese and diabetic. And this is the same reason why obese diabetics are more likely to have a, a unfortuitous outcome if infected by the seasonal flu as well, because they're already living in a pro-inflammatory lung state. So this is how we look at this. Obesity and hyperglycemia increases angiotensinogen. So there's more angiotensin 1. The ACE2 enzyme is inhibited. So we have less 1,9, less 1,7. What causes the inhibition? Well, once again, hyperglycemia. So diabetes, even aging. As we age, most people become hypertense before they die, and part of the reason why has to do with the fact that we, are, we produce less ACE2 with aging. So this is compounded by being obese and diabetic, and if you have heart disease, if you have vitamin D deficiency, there is further inhibition. A lack of omega-3s leads to more inhibition. And so now we have this big imbalance that I showed you, the same image as before, I'm just showing you the reasons in this one. So we have this imbalance between pro-inflammatory angiotensin 2, anti-inflammatory angiotensin 1, and this imbalance leads to, can lead to lung damage. So what happens now when we get infected by SARS-CoV-2? This is what happens. You can see what took place here. Angiotensin 2, bigger. Look right over here. Angiotensin 2, and then the lung damaging inflammation scenario. Bam, it grows. Look also what happens here. We already see that ACE2 is reduced when we are flamed up compared to deflamed, lean, healthy people. So once we become infected with SARS-CoV-2, there is even a greater depression of the ACE2 enzyme, creating a greater imbalance between angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 1,7. And if one is unlucky, they will die from COVID-19 because of the lung damaging effect that is created by the ACE2 sugar-coated enzyme that allows for greater SARS-CoV-2 entry into lung cells. Upon entry, there is a greater inhibition of ACE2 enzyme activity, therefore greater angiotensin 2 
And now if you're infected, it could be very, very bad, obviously. So this is how the ACE2 system operates in uh, coronavirus infection and COVID-19 manifestation. So what does one, should one do? Well, obviously, the big message from Bill Gates and Fauci should be reduce your obesity, reduce your hyperglycemia, become vitamin D adequate, omega-3 adequate. Can't change aging, so we can do everything we possibly can to keep our ACE2 enzyme operating properly, but they never talk about that, do they? Isn't that interesting? They never talk about that. All they talk about is social distancing, never shake hands again, wear your mask, and we're waiting for the vaccine. Meanwhile, we have millions upon millions of Americans who are living over here, and they are just fertile ground, fertile territory, fertile terrain for a really bad outcome from SARS-CoV-2 infection. So what should they do? Well, you should get deflamed. And I've got lots of videos you can watch. I've got, this is my 11th video where we're talking about COVID-19 and the coronavirus. You can see all the titles right here. Easy to watch, simple, straightforward for the most part. And if you want to take my approach, then you can head over to my website and score one or all of my books. So if, you, if, you, if you're not worried about breast cancer, well, then you should get these three books right here. And you should share them with all your friends because, well, a deflamed state is a healthy state and it's a state that will allow one to not have or cre reduce one's risk of having a negative consequence from being affected by SARS-CoV-2. So click right through, like the YouTube channel, follow me on Facebook. Def they're both called Deflame Nutrition Facebook page and Deflame Nutrition YouTube channel.